Good morning. I am Kevin Price. Delighted to be with you. Going to spend some time talking to you about you and your business. Going to talk a little bit about uh, kind of a shakeup over at Coca-Cola. Uh, maybe even earth shattering if uh, you're part of that organization, that culture, or a stockholder in it. We're going to talk to David Winters. He is with uh, Wintergreen Advisors. Their website is wintergreenfund.com. Before we get into our topic, uh, David Winters, uh, first of all, welcome to the show. How to give us the elevator speech, if you will, about your uh, about your firm? Well, Wintergreen uh, Fund is a global no load uh, mutual fund that invests in companies, quality companies that trade at big discounts to their value. Um, and we try to find managements that are honest and are driven to do the right things for shareholders. And really, we can take a lot of risk out over time, Kevin, by doing that. Mm -hmm. And so when people think no low, they assume, you know, how, the, the question then is how does your, uh, your firm get funded? You know, the, the fund over time, you know, people have sent in their money. We're on a, a lot of different platforms. Uh, there is a class we have with a 12B1. But a lot of it is uh, has to do with enthusiasm for the way that we, um, you know, really focused on protecting people's capital, which, you know, Kevin, I know is, you know, something that you've won a lot of awards for and I admire you for. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Talk a little bit about the, uh, pe you know, the uh, Pepsi situation. I mean, the Coca-Cola situation. I uh, see now I'm going to start rumors about Pepsi if I'm not careful. Talk a little bit <laughs> well, about, give us know, a little bit of background and then talk about what uh, has happened recently. Wintergreen you know, on behalf of investors, had been a uh, shareholder in Coca-Cola for five years. And we liked the fact that it was global and durable. And we thought that the people, you know, were honest. And, and uh, we read the proxy in 2014 and saw that they were going to dilute the shareholders by this massive compensation plan to the tune of somewhere between 24 and $30 billion. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't believe it, Kevin. And so we decided to object. And long story short, uh, ultimately they uh, instituted guidelines and rolled back a lot of this excess. And they've also uh, reduced the CEO's compensation by a substantial amount of money. And um, so now the bonus plan, which was you know, it's, it was going to be for the top 5%. It's now the top 1%. But the aggregate amount of dilution is a lot less. And that's that means fewer shares will be issued, which means the Coca-Cola shareholders get more. So it's a, it's a real victory. Yeah, it's huge. And by the way, it's a great article there uh, at Bloomberg.com. If you put in a Google search, Coca-Cola cuts CEO Kent's. That's K-E-N-T apostrophe S pay. Uh, it'd probably be the first article just look for Bloomberg, and it includes quotes from you. So you ended up playing a major role. How does a company like yours end up playing a, a major role in a deal like this? You know, uh, I think it was that we were right on our facts and that, you know, we really had done the work and, you know, we had standing, um, as, you know, Warren Buffett had said, and uh, and that, you know, we were quite right. And so over time, I think a lot of people, once they realized the extent of the problem, really came to see that our, our point of view was correct mm -hmm. and that it was also correct in terms of just all investors. Because beyond Coca-Cola, this issue of, of massive transfer of wealth from the owners, the shareholders, to a few people is a real societal problem, whatever your politics. So what kind of, uh, what kind of stake do, does, do you have as a group in Coca-Cola? Well, we started off with about two and a half million shares, which was, uh, you know, for us, a lot of money, um, you know, small in comparison to, you know, the overall group. And today we still have a couple hundred thousand shares. Uh, you know, we found as the company has addressed a lot of these issues, the stock has moved up. And there's lots of other things to do. Uh, but we feel very much, you know, this is a huge victory because the stock's up, give or take, 10 points. And, um, and this uh, trend towards, um, you know, these massive sort of hidden comp plans, we think that's beginning to turn. And um, it could be a, a very significant moment for all of us investors in America. 
So it seems to me that someone like Kent, uh, you know, who uh, certainly obviously has no question in his own mind about his self-worth, uh, is not going to be uh, interested in acquiescing to a deal like this unless there's some kind of trade-off. Can you see any kind of trade-off in this, uh, performance uh, bonuses or something like that, that he can recoup uh, his losses? Well, you know, I don't know what goes on Mutar Kent's mind, but I think that uh, the board of Coca-Cola Company and the shareholders of Coca Company were appalled that this was done sort of in a, uh, you know, effectively a sleight of hand manner, and so, um, and you know, the new president of Coca-Cola, whose name is James Quincy, was you know not one of his choices. We understand, so I think he really didn't end up with. Um, a big alternative. What he did was excessive, and he did it in a way that wasn't, um, you know, straightforward, which is, you know, the foundation of the way that business should be done. I see that uh, in 2014, his total income uh, from from Coca-Cola added up to over $7 million. What does it look like it could be in 2016, or do you know? Well, basically from the proxy, um, the compensation is significantly reduced. Um, I think he went from, um, you know, 25 to about 15. And the dilution has been reduced, um, the total dilution to 10.8, which is still substantial. Um, so, you know, we don't think that, you know, Mutar's going to miss any meals. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I wasn't that pitch. concerned. I was more interested but, in the whole uh, political uh, and business dynamics going forward, uh, you know, rather than uh, his well-being. Uh, and it just seems interesting to me. It seems, and it seems like a guy like him wouldn't stay in an organization long after something like this, like this happened. So it's just kind of, I find it kind of curious. Well, look, we'll see what happens. I mean, there's been, uh, you know, substantial changes in restructuring at Coca-Cola, which we think is positive. There's been substantial management changes, which we believe um, are, are positive. And so we'll see what Mutar does. Um, but the thing is, you know, we've got to respect him for the fact that he, you know, you know, acknowledged this was wrong, and he changed course. And, you know, I think that's, you know, oftentimes a very difficult thing. And they've tried to, uh, it's now their burn rate, which is essentially how much additional equity um, after buybacks, they've reduced that. And so I think the Coca-Cola company has made a lot of progress. And, you know, it's really, a, I think, a beacon for all of us to, you know, Kevin, to know that companies are, are, are there for the shareholders, not for the management. And that's not only what the SEC has said, but I think it's, I think this this will be a you know in, in time viewed as a significant event that will change hopefully for the better of the returns of all investors. There you go, David Winter, CEO of Wintergreen Advisors. Best website for people to get more information. David, uh, www.wintergreenfund.com. Wintergreenfund.com. Thanks for being with us. Uh, thank you. This is great. You bet. When we come back, much more for you. I do want to remind you, best content here, including this interview, will be found over there at the national news website, usdailyreview.com. And you're listening to The Price of Business. 